Welcome to this eLearn security video lesson on Evil Twin Attack with Mana Toolkit Part 1. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we can conduct what is known as an Evil Twin Attack using a toolkit known as Mana. With an Evil Twin Attack, our main goal is to duplicate a known target access point, ESSID, also known as SSID, conduct a deauthentication attack against a station connected to the legitimate access point, and with some social engineering, obtain a pre-shared key for a WPA2 wireless network once the station connects to our evil twin or rogue access point by serving a phishing web page. We'll also cover a second attack vector where we'll use the evil twin attack method to capture NTLMV1 or NTLMV2 hashes from a connected station, which we could potentially use to access additional systems which the customer might have exposed on the internet. For instance, an SSL VPN using LDAP authentication, which is not enforcing the use of multi-factor authentication. For the most part, we'll be utilizing a tool known as MANA, or MANA Toolkit, by SensePost, and is available from the following GitHub repo. First, a requirement for this attack is that we have the appropriate hardware. Specifically, we'll need two separate wireless adapters that support packet injection monitor mode, and access point or master mode. For our purposes, we are using two Alpha Wireless BGN USB adapters with a Theros chipsets, similar to the one seen here, which supports everything we'll need to conduct this attack. We'll need one adapter to launch a deauthentication attack against a station, while our second adapter will be simultaneously configured to host a rogue access point using MANA and its built-in host APD package. As you can see with the IF config output, we already have our two adapters ready, one of which is WLAN0 and the other WLAN1. We'll also be using several components from the Aircrack NG suite to identify a target access point and send deauthentication frames to a connected station. Aircrack NG can be downloaded from the following URL and alternatively is installed by default on Kali Linux. One of the first things we're going to want to do is to conduct some information gathering and identify our target access point. In the terminal window here, we'll first put our WLAN0 wireless interface into monitor mode with the airmon-ng start WLAN0 command. We can see after we run the airmon ng start wlan0 command that we now have a new interface named wlan0mon. This is now our monitor interface. Next, we're going to use the aerodump-ng tool to briefly monitor our target access point. Let's take a look at the aerodump-ng help to see what switches we can use to focus in on our monitoring task. There are a number of options here, but the two we're going to use for this demonstration are the dash dash E SSID option, as can be seen in the filter options area, and the dash dash manufacturer switch, which will give us an idea of the access point manufacturer. The manufacturer information will come in useful later in this video when it's time to create our social engineering portion of the attack. The dash dash E SSID option will allow us to focus in on our in scope access point. In this case, our target access point is named ELS-FOO-WIFI. Let's run Aerodump NG with our two command line options and start monitoring the target access point. We'll also need to specify our monitor interface, so our full command line will be something like the following. Some things to notice about the ELS foo Wi Fi access point configuration from the AeroDump NG output is that it is configured to use WPA2 encryption 
with a CCMP AES cipher, and PSK denotes the access point is configured to use a pre-shared key authentication scheme. We've also been able to determine the access point manufacturer, which is Netgear, which we can see in the manufacturer field. We should also note the channel denoted by the CH column. We'll want to use the same channel when we configure our rogue access point. Furthermore, we can also see that there is a single station connected to the ELSFU Wi-Fi access point in the bottom area of the AeroDump NG output. Later, we'll be focusing our deauthentication attack against that station. Now that we have a general idea of how we're going to use AeroDump NG, have focused in on a target access point, and have determined its encryption type, authentication mode, and several other parameters, let's move on to the next part, which is the MANA Toolkit. First, let's quit AeroDump NG and stop the monitor interface with the AirMon NG stop WLAN0 MON command, and also bring the WLAN0 up interface up again so we can use it later. Now we need to install MANA Toolkit. This can be done quickly with Kali Linux by running the apt install MANA Toolkit command. We've already installed it on this system, but as you can see, it is available via the default Kali Linux package repos. Once we've installed it, the main program should now be located in the forward slash user forward slash share MANA Toolkit directory. Let's navigate there. Now before we run MANA, we need to modify some of its configuration files. Since we're specifically trying to run an evil twin attack, we're going to temporarily disable some options, and make some other minor modifications to the configuration. This is important, since if we need to leave all of the options enabled, we run the risk of targeting stations and access points which are not within our scope. So, first, let's change into the Run MANA directory. In this directory, we'll notice there are a number of different scripts we can use to start MANA. Each one of these are used for different purposes. For example, if when a station connects to our access point, we want to route all of its internet traffic through our host, we would use the start-nat-full.sh script. For our purposes, we're going to use the start-noupstream.sh script, which will not provide internet access to a targeted station. Depending on your use case, you can choose the appropriate script for your needs. Let's take a look at the contents of this script we're going to use before we do anything else. In the first several lines, we see that MANA will use WLAN0 interface to host our rogue access point. This is denoted by the PHY variable. Next, we can see that MANA will also use the hostapd-mana.conf file within the forward slash etsy forward slash mana dash toolkit directory. And third, the host apt binary location, which is denoted by the host apt variable. Of these three, let's take a look at the host apt dash mana dot conf file first. This is where we'll configure our main rogue access point settings. In the first several lines of the host apd-mana.conf file, we can set several values such as the interface option. Since we'll plan on using our WLAN0 interface to our host rogue access point, we can leave this option as its default. The next option is the bssid or MAC address we want our rogue access point to have, which we'll leave as its default value as well. If we're running a vanilla installation of Kali Rolling, we can also leave the driver option at its current setting. The last two options, SSID and Channel, we're going to change, since our target access point is named ELSFU Wi-Fi, and that's the AP we're going to masquerade as. Let's change that value. And since earlier we saw that the legitimate ELSFU Wi-Fi access point was on channel 6, we'll set our rogue access point to the same channel as well. We can leave all the other host APD options at their defaults for now. We'll save the file. Now that we've configured the properties for our rogue access point by modifying the mana host apd.conf file, let's go back to the start no upstream.sh script and make some changes to that. 
Due to changes in command lines and options to third-party software that MANA utilizes, we need to modify several of the lines in this file in order for everything to work out smoothly. First, we're going to add dash "-i switch to line 25, the one that starts with DNS mask. We need to add the switch before the PHY variable. This is due to changes in the DNS mask command line and is a known issue with the default MANA configuration. Next, we're going to comment out line 26, the line starting with DNS spoof, since we'll be handling DNS spoofing with Metasploit's fake DNS module. Lastly, we're going to comment out line 30, the one beginning with MSF console. Let's save our changes to that file, and we're done with our initial configuration for now. Some things we should know before we move forward with our attack. Upon starting the start-noupstream.sh script, MANA will set up a rogue access point with the name ELSFoo Wi-Fi on wireless interface WLAN0. It will also act as a DHCP server so that when a client connects, the client will be allocated an IP address on the same network as our rogue access point. It will also proxy all connections from a connected station to a local Apache server instance on our attacker machine using a built-in wpad.dat proxy configuration file and DNS spoofing. To implement our fake DNS server, we're going to use Metasploit's fake DNS module. In another terminal window, let's start MSF console and load the fake DNS module, which can be found under auxiliary forward slash server forward slash fake DNS. Let's take a look at the options for this module so we can understand what we're going to need to configure. First, we need to set the target action option to fake. This tells the module to falsely resolve DNS requests coming from our target and instead redirect them to our attacker machine. Second, we change the target domain option to a wildcard using an asterisk. This will redirect any and all DNS queries to our attacker machine. Lastly, we need to set the target host option to 10.0.0.1. 10.0.0.1 is the default IP address MANA will use as the IP address of our rogue access point. Once those options are set, we can run the exploit-j command to start the module, and we can, at this point, leave it in the background. Our final piece is to create the social engineering aspect of this attack. Once the station is connected to our rogue access point, and upon launching a browser, they will be redirected to a web page of our choosing. Since we're aiming to get the pre-shared key through social engineering, we've created a simple phishing web page just to introduce the concept behind this particular attack. For a real-world engagement, we'd probably want to use a page tailored to the organization to act as our phishing page. You can use your imagination here. So as an example, and since we've determined earlier that our target access point manufacturer was Netgear, we've created the following landing page to use as our pre-shared key phishing page simply for demonstration purposes. This is a simple web page with a form notifying about a firmware upgrade under the pretext of important security updates and requests that the user enter the wireless key or pre-shared key to continue. We'll want to copy our Roos phishing page to the forward slash user forward slash share forward slash mana dash toolkit forward slash www forward slash portal directory as this is the web route that mana will use to serve the page for the captive portal. We'll copy our evil twin index.html file there. We'll also need to copy any images and other files you might be including for your phishing page. 
into the portal directory as well. In this case, we also have a Netgear logo image we'll copy into the MANA portal web root directory as well. Once all of these pieces are in place, we're ready to conduct our evil twin attack. First, we'll fire up our rogue access point by running the start-noupstream.sh script we configured earlier. Next, in another terminal window, we'll set our second interface, the one we're going to use to conduct a deauthentication attack, WLAN 1, into monitor mode. Next, we'll run the aerodump-ng tool with our filter for ELS foo Wi-Fi. But also, this time, we'll use the dash dash channel option to lock the monitor on channel 6. And also remember that our new monitor interface is WLAN1MON, since we're using the WLAN1 interface in monitor mode. And again, here, we can see a station connected to the legitimate access point, but AeroDump is also picking up our rogue access point as well, which is denoted by the open network here. We can ignore that, as it's not important for our attack. Our next step is to send deauthentication frames to the connected station. Assuming our proximity to the station is closer than its legitimate access point, the station should connect to our rogue access point. We'll use the AirPlay-NG tool to send our deauth packets from our monitor interface to the connected station with the following command. Where dash B is the BSS ID or MAC address of the target access point, dash C is the station MAC address. And we're also going to send 25 deauth packets to the station with the dash dash deauth switch. We'll also specify the name of the target access point with the dash E switch. After a bit, we should see our disconnected station automatically reconnected to our rogue access point in the MANA terminal. We can see here that after the deauthentication attack, that the station has successfully authenticated to our rogue access point. Next, it's a matter of the user opening up their browser. Let's simulate that from a remote desktop session we have to our target station. As we can see, the user's browser has been automatically redirected to our Netgear firmware upgrade phishing page. Now, assuming the end user enters their key into the form, as an example, we'll enter Wi-Fi underscore password and click on the Submit button. The attacker can then retrieve the pre-shared key from the Apache access log file. And we can see here, in plain text, in the Apache access log, the pre-shared key to the ELS-foo-wifi network. In a real-world engagement, we would then log into the legitimate ELS-foo-wifi network and continue with our penetration testing tasks. And this concludes our video lesson on Evil Twin Attack with MANA Toolkit Part 1. Thank you for joining us.